her new project appropriately named Scoop and a potential reboot of oh. the challenges of tackling a real life headline making royal interview in her new movie. But first, this is today. Welcome back. That was BBC broadcaster Emily Maitlis and her consequential 2019 interview with Prince Andrew. Well, four days after that aired, the Duke of York stepped down from his public royal duties. Well, now, the story of how that conversation came to be is being told in Scoop a new Netflix movie starring the award-winning Gillian Anderson. Take a look. I can't tell you what the questions will be because I don't know myself yet. But when I do know, I still won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but they will be fair. Jillian, good morning to you. Oh. I remember watching this interview. Hoda and I sat and watched it the morning after it aired, and my jaw was on the mm. floor. Do you remember watching it at the time? I think I put it off uh, for a long time because I knew how cringe-worthy it was, and um, eventually really dug into it when I started this project. And yeah, it's jaw-dropping. When the role came along, this role of Emily was not one you jumped at mm. right away. In fact, I think you said no at first. I did, yeah. Why? Well, you may not uh, know Emily that well over here, but she is, um, you know, she's a household name in the UK, mm. and she's uh, she has a podcast now. She used to work for Newsnight for the BBC for a very long time. And um, uh, she's an incredibly formidable uh, journalist and woman who is um, in our midst all the time. And the idea of playing somebody that was so familiar and so alive uh, felt incredibly daunting. You, you're pretty formidable yourself. You played Margaret Thatcher in The Crown. Did, yeah. But is it because she was so familiar to everybody? That's kind of yeah. what made it intimidating. Yeah, and also I, I think the fact that she's in my neighborhood. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna run into so, her at the shots. What, one could, yeah, she's that close. Well, so. actually, I heard, she didn't, you, she wasn't a part of this project per se. You didn't prep together or anything like that. But I heard you did run into her at, at, at an event one night. I, I did. There was a, a charity event uh, that I was invited to that she was going to be at. <laughs> there you are. And I know. And I'd literally come in from the country being in the mud with my with my kids for a week and, and didn't prepare at all, didn't have makeup with me, and then showed up. And, you know, that is her. That is as glam. She is glam. She's glam. Uh, she is glam. Leather miniskirt, tan, tan, <laughs> blow dry. And, you know, if anybody had asked in that moment which one was the was the actress <laughs> it wouldn't have been me i would have been you, a journalist did you ask for any yeah. tips or what, um, did she, at in that, that point, moment yeah we were mid-shooting okay yeah so yeah like, and so i went in you know incredibly familiar yeah because i've been studying her and i i must have come across as a freak well if i doubt that very much i you know she must be i would think quite honored that you're playing her but the the movie's more about it's about of course the interview mm -hmm. But it's st told from the booker's perspective, yeah. the producer's perspective, how you landed that interview, how how she was able to get the palace and Prince Andrew to do something that the royals almost never do. Yeah. So Sam McAllister is yeah. a booker, and it's 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 her book, and um, this is her take on what happened at the time, how she managed to land the interview and convince them that it would be a good idea to lay all you know everything on the table and and speak his truth, and there was definitely an opportunity for that to happen and mm. that's not quite how it went as an interviewer i get stressed just watching yeah. her conduct that interview oh, yeah. yeah but it's a master work it is. by her it is so okay we have to ask you about the x-files because yeah. there is talk that there may be a reboot if there is w would you want to be involved you know, Maybe. it's so funny because for most of my life since i have since I finished the X-Files, every interview I do, people have asked, and the, and the answer has always been, nope, not going to happen, not going to happen. Now, Ryan Coogler, who's the uh, director of uh, Black Panther, brilliant, brilliant director, has approached Chris Carter to say that he wants to do a take on it. And I cannot think of a better way around for a reboot to happen. I think he's... A bit of a genius. So you're saying there's a chance. There's a chance it will happen. Whether I am involved in it is a whole other thing. But but you're not in saying his no. Hands, but I'm not saying no because oh. I think he's really cool, and I think if he did it, uh, it would probably be done incredibly well. And maybe I'll pop in for 
for a little something something. That's exciting. We'll yeah. take that. We will okay. take that right now. I was reading this morning and I have to say, I know you've talked about it before, but I was just stunned. You were mm -hmm. 24 years old when you landed that part of a lifetime. You had a baby 10 days after you gave birth by C-section, mm -hmm. I might add, yeah. you were back at work. Which, yeah. talk about jaw-dropping, that's amazing. How do you reflect on that now? That was in the 90s. Um, I think if I didn't feel so guilty that I got pregnant in the, in the first season, <laughs> that I might have uh, taken better care of myself and mm. been more thoughtful about what I needed and uh, from my best interest at the time. Yeah. But I think I was so wrapped up in, I almost got fired, I messed this up, I'll do whatever they say, you know. And uh, so yeah, 10 days after a C-section. But, we, but we're still talking about it, right? It's yeah. interesting, because we're still, you know, whatever it was, 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, well, it, it's, it was quite extraordinary then yeah. and, and now. And also you have become such an advocate for women and, and self-acceptance and empowerment, but I like the frame you put on it. You know, it's not just like inspirational quotes we say to ourselves in the mirrors, but you're, you're, you're saying women should be thinking about what they want. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I've got a book um, of letters. Um, I, we put a call out international around the world for women to write in uh, their sexual fantasies. Um, in the way that uh, my secret garden was in the 70s. And wow. So women from around the world have, have written into this book uh, called Want. And at the end of the day, probably what stands out the most is the degree to which women struggle to ask for what they want, mm. both at work, in relationship, and in the bedroom. And so uh, it's worth continuing to talk about, yeah. That sounds like a steamy one. I, I would yeah. say come back and talk to us about it, but okay. I'm not sure <laughs> we'll be able to. <laughs> just, just, just call me. Tell me about it. All right, Jillian. You can read it. Yes, I'll yeah. read it. Okay. Even better. Yeah. Thank you. And then we'll talk okay. afterwards to discuss. You can catch okay. Scoop. It's on Netflix. It's starting this Friday. Hoda, over to you. Uh, I'll read it, too.